If you are a Chinese speaker, a learner of Chinese, or even say a heritage speaker who wasn't born in China, but you've learned it, say, growing up in your family, today's clip could be life changing for you. As I'm speaking now, just in this introduction, have a look at the characters that are being written beside me. And I want you to look at both forms of each character and see if you can spot what's going on with the second one. So today's clip is probably going to be your Chinese teacher's worst nightmare. Often when you learn to write Chinese or Japanese characters, China we call them Hanzi, in Japanese kanji, in Korean Hanza. And actually if you're learning Vietnamese, you also have the Zhenom, the Vietnamese Chinese characters. They all follow this set of rules and as you were starting to learn the characters, I'm sure that your teacher said to you that stroke order is everything. If you write a character with the wrong stroke order, it will look unbalanced and a native speaker is going to be able to look at that character and tell that you wrote it incorrectly. Is that true? Hmm. Well, it kind of is. Balance is everything. But what happens is that between a beginner and say a Chinese child learning to write and an adult, something interesting happens. Now, if you look at scripts like the Cyrillic script, or even say Hebrew, you will notice that there's a very, very different handwriting form, even for standard writing, compared to the print form. Now, in the Cyrillic script, nobody will ever write in the form that you see printed in books. It's just not done. So as you learn, you need to learn both versions, the handwriting version and the printed version, so you know what's going on. In Hebrew, it's kind of the same. Nobody will actually write the letters in Hebrew, the way that you see them printed, there's a distinct handwritten form. In Chinese, you will generally learn with the kaishu form of Chinese characters, and there's a distinct stroke order to them. If you're a Chinese learner or a Japanese learner, I want you to write this character. Now, this character is tian, meaning a field in Chinese, or ta in Japanese, meaning a field. Um, you get it from, say, the word Tanaka, the surname Tanaka. But Try writing this. What is the stroke order that you were taught? Chances are, if you learn Chinese, you learn the stroke order like this. One, two, three, four, five. If you are Japanese, you probably learned this. One, two, three, four, five. Did you see the difference? The Chinese, one, two, will do the cross stroke first, down and across. Whereas Japanese will do one, two, down first, and then finish off the horizontal strokes. Now, that might not seem like a lot to you, but this is one of the keys to writing like an adult. In this case, you're going to want to follow suit with Japanese. Now, when we're talking about writing in handwriting, there are three levels generally of character writing. We have kaishu. Kaishu is the general print version. That's the version that you'll see in books and it's the version that young kids will learn. Then we have the other extreme, which is tao shu. Tao means grass, so the grass script. And you see these huge squiggles all over the place and some of them just don't look anything like the character. But you've got something in between and that's what we call xing shu. Now I've written xing shu in xing shu script. You can see here that in this part of the character here, it's actually not doing what you would learn in the kaishu. If it were in kaishu, it would be like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. You can see that going down nice and straight, but in xing shu. See that there? This little tick that and they're joining in together and then this. And they're joining in together. These are some of the common forms that I'm going to start to show you in today's clip. Now, this is not going to be a comprehensive clip, but I'm going to show you some of the altered stroke orders and some of the altered shapes that you're going to want to learn as an intermediate to an advanced learner of Japanese or Chinese so you can start developing a more adult handwriting style. And this is really important because your handwriting tells a lot about you. And so if you can develop that adult handwriting style, it's really going to say something too about your level of Chinese. So it all starts with the basic strokes. We have the yen. We have which is normally a straight stroke. Now, most people 
if they look at it not being Chinese or Japanese, will think that's just a straight line. But what's actually happening when you do this straight stroke, your muscles, and this is from when you have the brush, your muscles actually start and they draw almost in a figure eight. They come up, they curve out, and they pull back. Now, this pullback is really, really important, and we're going to see it recurring over and over again, and this is giving the flavor to adult-style hanzi or kanji writing. So I want you to imagine, just like in Kung Fu or martial arts, you've got this pullback, pullback of the fist, bang. This action is happening all the time when you're writing. You've got this reflex, this pulling back in your hand. It's literally what's happening with my fist there as I'm pulling back. So just remember that. Um, I'm going to do a normal version of this hung, this straight stroke now, and you'll see what I mean. Can you see that? It kind of looks straight, but it's not. It starts off heavy, it gets thinner, it gets lighter, and then I pull back in. And you can actually see in the Malbi books, the books that teach you how to write with a brush, they will actually have little micro muscle movement guides on where you should be moving the muscles in your hands to get the right shape to your strokes. So this is really important, the hung stroke. And it could even be a little more bowed than that. So you can see that it's actually not dead straight. It's kind of coming up, it's curving down and pulling back in. You've got the pullback. The dian, this dot also, it's not just a dot like this. It actually goes there and pulls back. That pullback is essential. And then you also have another one with a flick kind of pulling back. So you've got the shu going straight down. You've got weight coming down at the end and then boom, this other pullback. It's always pulling back to this way. Then we have the pier. The pier just comes down and that's probably the only one that doesn't have a hard pullback, but it's going in this direction. But this is the key, the na stroke. Na is this stroke that goes down. Now, traditionally, it's going to look something like this. So what happens is when your hand gets to this point, it goes down with the brush, then it kind of moves out, and then it pulls in. What happens though, as you're writing faster, it's gonna look like this. So watch this, if I write the word water, which would normally look like this, right? You can see even the weight come down there. This is what water is going to look like in Xing Shu, in running writing. Can you see this bit here? This is going to be a common trait that we see happening time and time and time again. You're going to come down for this stroke and it's gonna pull back. Even in the dian, this dot, have a look at this. So the word dian, I'm going to write it in the, this would be the typical dian ti version, the simplified form of dian. See these dots, they're not normal dots. This is the xing shu version. So you've got this, you got that there and one, two, three. See this shape here? This is a shape that you're going to want to remember. That is the shape of four dots and it happens in so many characters. So if I were you and you wanted to start to get your muscles trained, this is what we're talking about in Minecraft. Language is a full contact sport. You wanna get the language into your muscles. It's not just here, it's in your body, it's in your throat, it's in your hand. So just sit there, one, two, three, up. One, two, three, up. This shape is going to come around. You can see that same curve coming into when I did water. Shui or mizu in Japanese. Have a look at this. So I come down, bang. There, you can see that there. That's a bit of a wonky stroke down my phone. I'm using this by the way to do it. And so it's a bit slippery on the screen, but you can see this hook coming in. You're going to want to develop a really nice shape to that. So now I'm going to teach you some of the basic shapes, more of these really cool basic shapes. So you want to get this down. First of all, I mentioned say for this tian, you're going to want to stop doing this crossbar first because you won't be able to get it. There's a general principle is that you do the vertical first, then you finish off the horizontal. So for example, that tian would be like this. You see that? I'm doing the vertical down and then across. So it would end up coming up looking like this. If you're actually doing it in one stroke. One stroke, by the way, you can Google this. It's called yi bi cheng. Yi bi cheng zi. So yi bi cheng means you can write any character in one stroke. And I actually have a full book here of yi bi cheng um, 
letters. You, I've actually got a ton of them. Each time I go to China, I'll stock up on all these kinds of supplies. But you've got thousands of characters in there showing actually how to write every single character just with one stroke. Let's look at the word for hand. Shou. So you would probably know it as that. That is hand. Okay, shou or te in Japanese. Um, now that looks a bit wonky there, it doesn't look that balanced, but you get the idea, it comes down, bang. You can even see my hung strokes are starting to get some uh, weight lifting off and coming back down, but it's still not there. You want to see the Xing Shu version? This is, now this is not Chao Shu, this is not crazy crazy, this is just normal handwriting. Ready? There you go. That is your standard Shu. So what's happening, you're doing the top bit, you're coming down now, remember that rule of doing the downstroke, then finish off the horizontal bits. So the rule is vertical stroke down, finish off the horizontal bits. And so you get this, dun, dun, dun. and that becomes your standard for shawl. Sometimes you'll even see this first bit as a dot, and then coming down, and then these bits here. So shawl becomes this. That is a very normal adult style of writing shou hand. Now, this comes into play in words like this. You might know this word, wo. Now, this is the normal kaishu way of writing wo, meaning I in Chinese, wo. This would be the xing shu version. Get this, this is where stroke order goes crazy and your Chinese teacher is going to smack you on the wrists. See that? Now, what I've done, I've got my shou on the side, and then I've got this other part here that's like a weapon held by the hand, but this goes into one stroke. Now, that could all turn into one stroke as well, so it might turn into something like this. Your Chinese teacher is probably going to tell you you're doing it wrong, but go and study these forms. If you want to study, you can actually go and type into Google whatever the character is you want, and then this word, xing, meaning to walk or to go, and then shu. Now, again, down, bang, bang. That's the normal kaishu version of it. But check this out. This is the xing shu version of shu for book. Ready? You do the stroke down here first. Down, bang, 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 and around. Shu. And this is where the actual jianti version comes from. You've got this stroke down. We got these ones here and that's up there. And you would know that as the Jianti, the simplified version of Shu. So let's do some more. Now we had this version here of Shu. That looks very similar to this. You would know this character here. Okay, but now what happens here is this is a very common side component. And what happens is it ends up turning like that. Now things to note where the normal stroke order is one, two, three, four, five. You can see that it's changed to one, down first. That comes there, that comes there, and that goes across there. Now, the other thing is notice that these intersect actually a little bit to the left. That's going to help with the balance of the character. So then if you get the word like he, he ping, you might write it like this. Now you can see that would normally be this, one, two, three, four, five, bang. But that now turns into this. Okay, you can see that line extend over. Here's another one. You would normally see that as a side component for a tree, mu. But when you join it into other ones, you might know this character, meaning a forest. You've got two trees together. So what happens, this bit can actually come in and join into this bit here, which would turn into this. And you can see there's like a balance there between these. Um, that's actually a little bit out of balance, but you can see it. And then you can see also, you get this common pulling back in. It's like this punch pulling back in. Let's do some more. This is a cool one. You would know this very common word, cheng. Okay, that's the normal stroke order. It looks really wonky because I haven't written like that for a long time. This is the Xing Shu version of it. Ready? It's totally different stroke order. We go bang, 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 bang. That's very different, but it's got this nice balance to it. If you did it in the stroke order, so what are the strokes they did? One, 
two, coming down, doing that bit down there, bang, cross, and up. That's totally different to the one, two, three, four, five, six that you would do in your exercise books as a student. However, an adult would just bang, and that's my chun, and that would look very normal. If you wrote it with all of this native prosody in your handwriting prosody, no native speaker would pick that up as being weird because it's got the right balance. Now, we get into some interesting areas. Now, you remember when I mentioned that we do the downstroke first? So, for example, the word sheng, meaning um, life, you would normally do one, two, three, down and across. If you were Japanese, you would do one, two, three, four, five, like that. So that same difference, but when you're writing it in Xingshu, in running writing, that downstroke is going to come first. So we do one, two, down, bang. Look at that. So bang. That's sheng. You can see we've come across here, across, then the downstroke, then the cross strokes. I might uh, expand it out a little bit. There's one, two, down, then I'm doing my cross strokes. So fast, it turns into this bang. There. That's pretty cool. Now that comes into this character. Now you can see we've got two components here. This component here is going to probably go to that rule that we learned just now. However, let's have a look at this bottom component, yeah, of moon, which actually means flesh. When you write that in Qing Shu, it's like this, down, bang, bang. Now, your strokes would normally be across like this for, yeah, for moon. However, when you're writing them with that kickback, watch this, one, two, and it kicks in. And so what happens, there's just this thing you gotta know, and nobody's ever gonna teach you as a foreign learner of Chinese, that that middle part of the moon with the kick in is representative of the moon. So if I wanted to write the word, I'll put this character here, Qing here, it's actually written like this, bang, 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 and then I have this underneath. That is the equivalent of that. That's pretty crazy, huh? But you'll get away with it. So again, you can do that for any time that you see the moon character. So that means Ming or Asta in Japanese for tomorrow. So you can actually write it like this. I did it slowly so it looks weird. Let me do it a little faster. And there's nothing wrong with writing like that. That's actually normal adult way of writing it. Be careful not to mix that up with the. Now, if you write this character here fast, it turns into this down, up, and around. Looks very similar. This is Ming. Down, the. You can see a difference. This one has the stroke on top, but you start getting used to these forms. Now, here's one for you. A very simple, simple character. In order to get that, we need to understand the Zhen would normally be this, right? But if we're getting that pullback in, we want to do this. Zhen. Now you can see this is coming over here. That pullback is essential because we'll see that in many other characters. For example, the character for big, Da. We'd normally have a Heng there, and then we'd have this Ren in there. There are two ways of writing Da in running writing. You could go this way, so, which would turn into bang, bang, and often you'll see it like that going up. You can see that with an upstroke that's leading onto there, bang, and that bit will almost be up higher, which is, by the way, where we get the Japanese um, ta for the hiragana, because it's coming from that high point. Or sometimes you'll even see the same character, ta or oki big, being written like this. So, whoa, you started the wrong way around. Yes. That started from the right, came down, but that is a totally acceptable Xing Shu form for big. Another very common character, um, the word to have. So again, we have, this represents a right hand, this part of the character, and we have flesh. So a right hand holding flesh means to hold. So check this out. One, two, three. You might think that's normal, but actually, to write it in Xing Shu, you start with the vertical stroke. So one, two, then you come down for that. 
but then this gets a tick on it. Remember that backstroke, so down, around, and then coming down. And so that eventually turns into this. That means you're to have. So this is crazy, but native speakers will get used to these forms. Now, here's a cool one. Let's have a look at beautiful, because that uses that big component. Normally it would be this lamb up top, and then we have big underneath, right? Beautiful, me, it's cushy. So watch this. We've got the lamb up top going down, bang, and then we've got the big down the bottom. However, we can go even further. So watch this. One, two, three, four, five, then coming down, bang, bang, bang. Yes, that is crazy, but this is a standard form for me, beautiful, that you'll see many old timers write. So I'll put it down like that. Now you think, how did they get that from it? But they've just repurposed some of the strokes and you get that form. Another really weird one is this. So to stand up straight, um, the stroke order would normally be one, two, three, four, like this. But when you're doing it in running writing, you start with this bit. So it's one coming up there. That's crazy, but it's a common form. And then you would lead on then to this zheng. Zheng, you would normally use to count. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. Just like in English when we do one, two, three, four, five. But when you're doing it in running writing, it would be this. Bang, 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 bang. That is the xing chu form of zheng. And that could even extend to this. How about this one here? So you go up, bang. Okay, so that's a very common word. You just extend the same pattern. You could do it like this, bang, up, and then you've got this one here. That's one version of it. Or you could just do it like this, bang, all the way up, bang, bang. So these are different forms of it. This is what I'm talking about when I say that writing Chinese is kind of like jazz. You've got to know the fundamentals. You've got to know your scales. You've got to know your basic fingering. But then it's up to you how you start to interpret that. Another word that I wrote a thousand times as a kid, uh, jia bang. So that's a pig under a roof, a house. Now that's the standard form, but again, you can write it like this, bang. You can see that has all the characteristics, this kickback in the end, this one leading onto that. You've got these coming up and then again, that same pattern there, that's always there. Again, you'll get this same pattern. So bang, you can see that there, meaning music. The jianti form would be this. Okay, but you can see how that's actually come out of that. Now it's fascinating to see this because this then is where all of the hiragana and katakana in Japanese came from. So for example, we've got um, peace, a roof with a woman sitting underneath it. But when we go into the faster form, it turns into this. Okay, which then turns into this, which then turns into this. which is ah. Another one could be this. Bang, bang, bang. Okay. Turns into this. Which turns into e. Ifu. Clothes in Chinese. But this is where all of the hiragana have actually come from. From these cursive forms or semi-cursive forms. But there you go. I hope that this has been helpful. This is just a very, very shallow introduction into the wonderful world of cursive Chinese handwriting or adult handwriting. I don't mean the crazy, crazy Taoshu. There is a really nice middle ground that you can develop a really nice style. So you're not going to look like a kid and it's not going to be so crazy that people can't read your handwriting but will give you this nice flavor. And just like good music, good jazz music, you're going to be able to develop your own style, your own flavor, and it will be you. And I think that you'll get a lot of respect too, especially from the older generation. They're not gonna think, oh, this is someone that just started learning. He still writes like a kid, even though he's been learning for 20 years. They're going to see, oh, wow, this person has actually dedicated so much and the language has become part of them. So I hope you enjoyed this. Maybe I'll do another clip showing even more of these shapes. This, this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you enjoyed this, please 
Click like, subscribe, it really helps promote learning. It helps promote what I'm doing to the world. I wanna get people inspired about learning, not just language, but using their brain to the full potential. Scan the QR code up top. If you're learning Thai, get Cracking Thai Fundamentals, both the book, you can do the online course, and don't forget to join in the conversation in our Discord server because we've got learners over 500 now from all walks of life all different languages and people who just want to learn not just language but everything that celebrates the brain and learning i'm stuart j raj i'll see you on the other side